Hey guys, it's Mikey Chen. This is kind of crazy, but did you know that the Milky Way and its companion galaxy are actually moving? I mean, they're not like packing up into a U-Haul and moving across the universe, but they, they are physically moving and really, really fast. By fast, I mean about 1.4 million miles an hour due to the ever-expanding universe. And astronomers had no idea why this is happening until the recent discovery that the Milky Way and its companion galaxy Andromeda are actually being pushed. Yep, they're being pushed by an intergalactic void. Now, the intergalactic void theory isn't anything new, but the void itself was never located, so researchers had really no backup for their theory. But recently, a study published in Nature Astronomy reports that this intergalactic void's location has been discovered and is pushing our galaxies even further into outer space. And if you're wondering how we were able to find, well, a void, researchers looked at the motions of the galaxies and created a 3 the map of the galaxy flow field, which allowed them to find an understarred region, the region that's doing all the pushing, aka the intergalactic void. Prior to this discovery, many theories were made to explain the Milky Way push phenomenon. One was that the denser regions of space were pulling us forward because of gravity. Scientists thought the greater attractor, a region that contains six clusters of galaxies 150 million light years away, was a possible pull force. Other astronomers pointed to the shapely concentration, a region region 600 million light years away for being the force at work. But now that we found the location of the intergalactic void, which just sounds like a Star Trek term to me, we could be one step closer to finding out the secrets of our universe and what lies beyond our technological capabilities. Next up, 80-year-old Robert Nelson, the president of the Crown Neck Society of California and one of three people who froze a man named James Bedford in liquid nitrogen 50 years ago, is now saying he's sure that Bedford will be brought back to life and that he wants to be frozen when he dies as well. So let me explain how this all began. In 1967, James Bedford, a psychology professor, passed away from kidney cancer at age 72 and it was about to be the world's first cryopreserved human being. Unlike contemporary patients who are cool and then stored into a liquid nitrogen capsule, Bitford really got the beta treatment here. He first had an ice bath, had his blood replaced with biological antifreeze, stuffed into a styrofoam box, and then stored, yeah, in a garage for a short amount of time because his capsule was still in the process of being built. Bitford told Nielsen a few days before his death, he said, I don't have any hope that I will ever be revived, but I do this in the hope that this incredible science will benefit my children and my grandchildren someday. Nielsen is now confident confident that Bedford will be revived soon because, as he explained it, at the time when Bedford was frozen, men had never been on the moon, there were no GPS or cell phones. That's why he's so confident that we will definitely be able to develop technology advanced enough to save Bedford within the next 50 years. Although Nelson doesn't believe in immortality, he does believe in greatly extending life and says that there is no question that science is progressing rapidly, which of course is true. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think we could possibly develop a method to revive a human being within the next 50 years or so? And let's say we could, would you then demolition man yourself? Now, accurate figures of how many people have been preserved this way are difficult to obtain, but there are estimated to be several hundred people in the US and Russia. And if cryogenics really works, then we must be able to bypass the cellular damage at temperatures near absolute zero for years and years, which is almost impossible. Also, I was thinking, doesn't a person's soul move on after his or her body is dead? And if that's the case, do we really want to wake a bunch of people up that have no souls? I mean, we saw how well that turned out in Supernatural, but I think all we can say now is that cryogenics is still something of science fiction and that we will wait until the first human is restored to give any type of sincere recognition. Again, let me know in the comments below if this technology does work, would you want to do it? Also, do you think it's safe to wake up a bunch of people who might not have any souls and potentially initiate the soulless human apocalypse? Oh, and by the way, guys, the Beyond Science magazine has officially launched and so far the feedback I think has been pretty good so check out the first issue the link is in my description box let me know if you like it thank you all so much for watching this video I'll see you later